In our second procedure, we'll use a loop to calculate the total and average of a set of numbers. These numbers will correspond to the values taken by the control variable of our loop. Let's suppose that our problem is to find the total and average of all the integers between 1 and 10. Here's the code for the procedure. We begin by declaring our control variable i as before. We'll also need an integer variable total and we'll use a double variable average to hold the average when we calculate it. We then initialize our variable total to zero as in line seven. In our for loop i will run from 1 to 10 and as i takes on each value we add it to total and store the result in total as shown in line 10. Now if we were to examine total at any point as the loop executes it will be the total of all the values of i so far. So to keep track of what's going on in the loop, we can display the values of i and total, as we've done on line 11. Then when the loop finishes, we display total, and then calculate the average by dividing total by 10, as in line 15. And finally, we display the average. Notice though that these three lines are outside the loop as they only need to be executed once and this needs to be done after the loop has finished. Let's run the code now and look at the output. And this time we click on the calculate average button. and we can see the values of i and total are displayed as the loop executes and then the final total of 55 and the average of 5.5. And now that we see that the program is working properly we could return to our code and remove the line displaying i and total 10 times. This would mean then that our procedure would simply display the final total and the average. And remember, we could stop line 11 from executing simply by putting a comment in front of it. In our two lessons on loops, we've used them for repeating a set of instructions and for working with certain sets of values. What was common to all the examples that we've seen was that we knew exactly how many times each loop would execute. And for that reason we used a for loop. In later lessons we look at other types of loops which allow us to do similar tasks but in cases where we don't know how many repetitions we will need. These loops are called do loops.